What is going on, guys? Sky Walker here, and today, guys, I'm going to be talking about the New York Yankees. They've been on a tear. I've been having the itch just to talk about them a little bit, give you a little bit of a recap of what's been going on with the trade deadline coming up, just some trades that I want to see the Yankees happen. Because even though they have the best record in baseball and the best winning percentage in baseball, there's always moves that can be made. And the Yankees definitely need some starting pitching depth with Tanaka. Uh, he's still posed to come back. Uh, but the biggest question is, every time a pitcher gets hurt, is he, gonna be re- is he going to be able to return back to his form? With Tanaka, he's been so hit or miss this year, you just never know. And Sonny Gray, again, is very inconsistent this year. Uh, and Jordan Montgomery is out for the year. Now we got two young guys that are doing... Uh, Pretty well. The one guy's been doing great, Luiega. Uh, Sessa and Jermaine have been struggling a little bit since Jermaine had that great start against the Indians in the Yankee Stadium. But other than that, guys, we're gonna get uh, we're just gonna jump right into it. Right now, just wanted to bring this point up for everybody here that the Yankees are twenty six and ten against teams that are over five hundred. Yes, that is this morning when I'm recording it on Saturday, June thirtieth, the last day of June. The Yankees are twenty six and ten against teams that are over 500. That means they are on pace to break the Major League Baseball record for the best record against winning teams. This team can become historic. But the only way they can become historic is if they're holding up that beautiful trophy at the end of the year, at the end of October. Right now, the Yankees' record is 53-26, and tied for the AL East technically with the Red Sox, but since we have a uh, better winning percentage than the nasty Red Sox, we have the advantage puts us in first place this weekend the Yankees and the Red Sox are going head-to-head in the Bronx and this series is going to be a big one you may ask well how can a baseball series be big in June well remember Major League Baseball has that uh, wild card playing game and anytime you're facing a division rival especially when they're pushing you for the lead in the division Anytime you face each other is going to be a big time series because you have to win the division. You absolutely have to win it because if you don't win the division, you got to play in that wild card game and burn your ace. And for the Yankees, that would be mean burning Severino in game one. Maybe they go CC Sabathia in that wild card game because CC Sabathia is that good in October and he's just a gamer. But still, still burns a better pitcher in your in your rotation. Getting ready to go into that five game series. So you definitely want to win the division. So anytime you face your division rival, especially, especially and right at the top with you in the division, these are games you need to win and they're very important games throughout the season. So let's break down game one because game one was last night in which the good guys win big. The Yankees win eight to one. Like I said, the Yankees hold the Red Sox to one run on six hits. The Yankees bludgeon them with eight runs on 11 hits. Just to beat down the Red Sox. It was a great game to watch. It was a fun game to watch. Judge goes one for four with the strikeout, but hits a two-run bomb in the eighth inning. Stanton, and look out. The guy's heating up in a big way. He's raised his average over 20 points this month alone. He's well hitting, he's hitting well over 300 in June. He's up to about a 263 average. He walks twice, and uh, he goes one for two. I mean, he had a pretty solid game. He got on base. He's now sporting a 263 average on the year. So here's how the game kicked off. So, second inning, Mr. Glaber Torres hits one deep to center field over Jackley Bradley Jr.'s head, and Glaber thought he had a bomb, so he was jogging, and it hits about three-quarters of the way off the fence in deep center field. Glaber Torres hits his first career triple. Miguel Andowar follows right after Glaber Torres, hits a nice little bloop single in right, in the right field, just a, just a perfectly placed ball right in front of the right fielder. Right out of reach of the second baseman. Worked out perfect. The Yankees go up one nothing. Glaber Torres ends up going 2-for-3 in this game. <clears throat> DD goes 1-for-4. And Greg Bird finally shows up. The guy was batting 180 coming into this game. He was looking lost. I was, Me and the wife were talking on the couch when he came up. I was like, oh my goodness, this guy just doesn't know what he's doing right now. He needs to go down to AAA and get some minor league games under his belt, maybe get him some confidence and then come back up later. And then what does he do the very next pitch? Takes one to deep left field, goes oppo taco, and then he hits another one in the eighth inning. Hit two big bombs in the game. It was awesome. Great job, Greg Bird, for finally showing up in a big way. My boy CC, seven innings, six hits, one earned run off of Ben and Tenny double, knocking in Mookie Betts. 
He finished with 5Ks and had a walk, and the walk came in his last inning in the 7th. Technically, he hit the guy, but that's all right. Great game by the big fella. Chad Green comes in in the 8th, goes an inning with a strikeout. Jason Shreve comes in in the ninth, goes an inning, strikes out 2. And it was a great game by the Baby Bombers and the rest of the squad overall. And like I said, this game was important because we faced the Red Sox 12 more times this year. We played them 12 more times. Maybe 11 more times. I believe 11 more times because last night was going to be 12. 11 more times this year. You need to win as many of those as possible because of that wild card playing game. You have to win the division. The Yankees need to win the division, especially the way that our rotation set up right now. I'm not really worried about playing anybody in a one-game series or even really a, f- a seven-game series. That five-game series, anything can happen, and it's so hard to win. Obviously, you're going to get Severino twice in a wild card game. In a, and I, I'm sorry, not in a wild card game, but in a divisional playoff round. You're going to get Severino twice, but who's going to get you that third win, right? You can win that with two pitchers. Maybe Sonny Gray comes in. I trust he sees Sabathia in October, so maybe we can win that one pretty, pretty easy. Then you've got to go into a seven-game ALCS, and your pitcher's already a little bit worn out. See, I'd just rather win the division and <laughs> go right into ALDS with Seve going too strong. CC getting me a give me a good start and just ending that that series as quickly as possible to give us some rest going into ALCS. But with the trade deadline right around the corner, here's some trades that I want to make that I want the Yankees to make heading in to trade season. First and foremost, I want Thor to Grom. I want either Syndergaard or DeGrom, but here's the big question. Will the Mets even consider trading them across town? And if they get desperate enough where they think the Yankees have exactly what we want, they're going to be offering us up the best deal for either one of these guys. And personally, DeGrom would be the one that helps us the most this year as he's got the best ERA in baseball and he's just dominating over in, that, over in the National League. So the second question, after if the Mets can even stomach trading them across town into the Bronx, uh, will the Yankees be willing to give up what it takes to get them? And I'm hopeful that that would that both of those questions would be a yes, because Degrom and Pinstripes basically wins us the World Series. Now, of course, we got to go against the Astros, and the Astros are a very good team. And the Indians, if the Indians can make some moves, the Indians are going to be scary. But right now, the Indians are. Kind of struggling a little bit, especially in that weak AL Central. And the Astros are killing over in the West. But the Yankees need to make some moves. I think this is a three-team race right now in the American League. Sorry, Indians fans. You guys just got to make a move. And right now it's hard to really argue with me because you guys are kind of struggling in a very bad division. And Corey Kluber's looking like he's hurt and pitching a little bit rough. Maybe it would be a good idea to shut him down for a couple weeks or so. Give his back a little bit of rest. Give his arm some rest. But it's looking like a three-team race with the Yankees, the Red Sox, and the Astros. And it's really going to become an arms race. And there's not a whole lot of arms that's going to be dealt at the trade deadline for starting pitching. Mostly it's going to be a lot of bullpen guys. And probably not even... I think I personally think this trade deadline season is going to be very quiet. Uh, unless there's going to be some big-time surprises that's going to happen. But maybe a Manny Machado deal. Sorry, Fett. Uh, but it's looking like Manny Machado could get dealt at the deadline. But... Other than that, I don't really think of a big, big name unless DeGrom or Syndergaard gets sent off. And still, I don't. are the Mets even going to do that? Uh, they're kind of teetering. They say everybody's available from the Mets, but let's see what really happens. So if we can't get Thor or DeGrom, uh, the next best pitcher I would want is Blake Snell. Because he's a young stud, he's got team control. <clears throat> but we'll, <laughs> again, the Rays aren't willing to give up Chris Archer. So I doubt they're going to be willing to give up Blake Snell. But Blake Snell is a bad, bad man. One of the best left, probably a top five lefty in the league at age 26. The guy is just a stud. I would love to have this guy, and I'd give up a lot, of, a lot, a lot of prospects to go get him because it's another stud that we can have with Severino for the next 10 years. After Blake Snell, Madison Bumgarner, who's struggling a bit. He's a big name, but can he bounce back to his form? Back to the dominant form about three years ago. I would like to think that he does. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe you can get him on the cheap right now. And maybe does San Francisco not even entertain the idea of trading him? So there's a lot of... He's kind of more of the... He, with Blake Snell being the least likely, he's right there with the least likely, okay? And Thorne DeGrom are right above those guys. But here's the guy who I think the Yankees are going to make the move for. 
and the reports are coming out that the Rangers are probably going to trade him with before the trade deadline and before the All Star break. It would make sense because the Yankees need a pitcher right now, and it's Cole Hamels. Now he's not a big splash anymore because he's getting up there in age. And it's funny because he helped the Yankees win in 2009 as the Yankees shelled him in that World Series when he played for the Phillies. So it would be great to see if uh, he can come play for us in pinstripes and uh, help us win a World Series this time and actually get get himself a ring and not help us when we're the enemy. But right now he's got a 4-6 four, four record, which isn't great, but he's got a 3-6-1 ERA in 16 games. So he's actually pitching well as his offense is not giving him a lot of help, which in New York, Mr. Hamels, that record's going to shoot up because... We got a lot of offense. This one, 16 games, he got a 3.61 ERA. He's pitched 97 in the third innings, and he's got 97 K, so he's basically averaging a strikeout in an inning. And if I can get that guy to go right behind CC Sabathia and right behind Luis Severino and behind Sonny Gray, this guy can help out in a big, big way. Won't cost us a lot, so it's actually probably the smarter move, just not like an ace that I would particularly want. But trading for Cole Hamels would be a very very big, big time move that the Yankees can make that's going to be very underrated because, like I said, he's not going to cost a lot because he's getting older. The Rangers kind of really just want something in return because they're not going to be able to do a whole lot with him. Uh, so I think the Yankees are really going to make this move, and I think they're going to make it relatively quickly, uh, probably within the next couple days, couple weeks, you know, something like that. So, But those are just some of the guys that I want to see that the – the Yankees make a move for, and I guess the Cole Hamels is probably going to be the the most likely. Uh, as much as I would absolutely love, love to see Syndergaard and DeGrom come across town and be wearing the pinstripes instead of those nasty Mets colors. Because remember, boys play in a field, men play in a stadium. Just remember that, Mets fans, playing over there in your nasty city field. Other than that, guys... I'm uh, going to be breaking down just what the Yankees are going to be looking like here in the month of June, or the month of July, I'm sorry. We're done with June, basically. So here's what the Yankees' schedule is going to be looking like, <clears throat> looking into July. So we're going to start off, obviously, Sunday. We're going to finish this uh, weekend series with the Red Sox at 8 o'clock on ESPN. Make sure you tune in, because that's going to be a big, big game. Luis Severino against uh, David Price. Good luck, but Sevy's going to shut him down. David Price always gets shelled against the Yankees, so this should be looking good. So after after the first, we're going to be looking into July 4th week. The Yankees face the Braves the second, third, and the fourth all at home. Then, I, then they get a little bit of a break on the fifth when I fly out to Seattle. So perfect day off for the Yankees because then on Friday when I land in Seattle, I can watch the Yankees against the Blue Jays for that weekend series, Friday, Saturday, Sunday against the Blue Jays. Then me and the Fed are going to have a little bit of a competition Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the 9th, 10th, and 11th, the Orioles are going to be hosting the Bronx Bombers at Candom Yards. Then Indians, 12th, 13th, and 14th. And I actually believe I'm going to that game on the 13th. I am Friday the 13th, the Skywalker, heading to Cleveland to watch the Yankees beat down the Tribe. So we have the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. Right before the All-Star break in the Home Run Derby, the Yankees are facing the hometown Tribe here in Cleveland. Most of those games are at 7-10, Saturday 7-15, and then Sunday's at 1 o'clock game. Then you get the All-Star break. <clears throat> then we come right back on the 20th in the Bronx against the Mets. After the Mets series, that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we get the Tampa Bay Rays, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We get the Royals at home, 26th, 27th, 28th. So that is the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Oh, we get the Royals also on Sunday, the 29th. Four-game set against the Royals here in the Bronx. We get a day off on the 30th. And we started set against the Orioles again in Yankee Stadium on the 31st. So that's what the Yankees' schedule is looking like. It looks like a lot of dubs. Hopefully we can sweep the Red Sox, sweep the Braves, sweep the Blue Jays. Hopefully we sweep the Orioles as we have a doubleheader on that Monday the 9th. That would be great to take four from the from the Fet, although he'd be pretty upset. But uh, sorry, man. I need, to get us, I need to get myself a lead here in the division. Then the four-game set against the Tribe is going to be a tough one. I'm sure we're going to see Kluber and Carrasco if Carrasco's back. Uh, the Mets should be an easy sweep. The race, I would like to say, would be an easy sweep, but they swept us last time. So hopefully we can take some here in Tropicana Field. And, hey, I'm just got to say, <clears throat> going to get off track here a little bit. What the Rays did, I don't know if some Yankee fans got mad over it or whatever. I thought it was funny. So one of the games in Tampa Bay, 
over at Tropicana Field. Clint Frazier hits a deep fly ball. This sucker was gone. Except when you play in a dome, you have speakers hanging from the ceiling. And Clint Frazier busted a speaker in the race. Sent the Yankees a bill wanting to pay for the speaker. I think it was more of a joke than anything. But if it was more of a joke, I thought it was funny. I thought it was pretty creative and hilarious. But hopefully we can uh, give some payback from the Rays. Because the Rays aren't that great of a team. I'd like to be able to take all three there. And the Royals, they're kind of struggling a little bit. But for whatever reason, the Royals always give us a hard time. So I'm hoping to take three out of four there. And then, obviously, I'm hoping to take the one from the Orioles on July 31st. Give us a nice, easy July, it's looking like, other than the Indian series. Um, and then the ALE series are always tough. So the Orioles, even though they're struggling, and the Rays, even though they're struggling, they're going to be they're gonna be tough wins. Uh, like I, even, the, even the Blue Jays, but the Blue Jays are... The Yankees handle the Blue Jays pretty well. Uh, but the Orioles we struggle with, and the Blue Jays we struggle and the Blue Jays, the Orioles and the Tampa Bay Rays we struggle with. Uh, for whatever reason, we always struggle with these teams. So you can never guarantee those ones <clears throat> as easy wins. And that, guys, I think I've taken up enough of your time. Skywalker signing off. Peace, go Yankees, and start spreading the news. Oh, 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 oh,